Hello plant lovers, it is Matthew in Melbourne welcoming you back to my channel. Thank you very much for finding me and if you're new here, I grow cold, cool, intermediate orchids here in Melbourne, Australia with our greenhouse or grow lights or humidifiers, just me and them indoors or outdoors or not at all. So plant lovers, if that sounds like your conditions, do hit subscribe. I post every week on a Friday. I'm a complete amateur. These are my ramblings about things that have worked for me, not the definitive way to look after your orchids, but the things that I've learned that work for me in my climate. Which brings us quite naturally to the segue of today's video, which is, yes, this is a cymbidium. Yes, it's in bloom. But plant lovers, is there a story to tell about this cymbidium? Firstly though, let's have a little look. Isn't it beautiful? Fairly classic. It's a hybrid cymbidium, no ID, I'll tell you why. I'm filming this in late-ish spring and the blooms opened about two, two, three weeks ago. So fairly late in the cycle. Usually cymbidiums are kind of open and almost done actually by this time of year, but depends on the plant. Quite a classic color, that sort of paley lemon with streaks of pink through it. Um, I might say, in certain circumstances, not the type of plant that would drive me wild with desire to own it, but there's a reason why I do. All right, plant lovers, are you sitting comfortably? Because this is a tale of love, ancestry, and survival. How can that all be summed up in this orchid? Well, let's begin. So, plant lovers, first thing is, I met my partner when I was 48, not that long ago. First point of this video, never give up. It's never too late to find the love of your life. So that's that. Now, my partner's father is still alive and he is 93 and not out. He's still very smart, very with it, lives alone, drives, runs a club. Fabulous man, very active and engaged in life. But my partner's mother died about 20 years ago. Obviously, I never met her. So why I'm back in time, and I've been with my partner now for five years, so probably in year two, maybe, I went to John, my father-in-law's house, and we were talking about gardens and YouTube channels, etc. And he's, oh, Matthew, I've got a fabulous garden. Come and have a look. And I went outside, and it was basically just a piece of grass and some paving, and that's it burning sun and nothing else in it. So we had a laugh because he's got quite a dry sense of humor. But then I noticed in the corner, a ruinous sort of shady building and some plants on a wooden stand that are kind of tipped over and were overgrown. And as I looked, I realized oh, they were orchids. So it turns out my late mother-in-law, who I never met, who died 20 years ago, in the late 80s and early 90s, got into growing orchids. And my father-in-law, John, built her a shade house out the back of the house here in Melbourne. And not dissimilar to the conditions I'm growing here, actually. So she would be growing the same sort of orchids that I am. However, it was the late 80s, early 90s, and the whole sort of orchid growing thing hadn't really, I guess, taken off to quite the extreme that it has now. But nonetheless, the orchids that I found literally tipped over, just abandoned, were an Epidendrum, a Dendrobium kingianum, and this Cymbidium. And what had happened was that when Gladys, my mother-in-law, who I never met, died, John basically just left the shade house to fall down. He never went out there. He didn't water anything. He just left these plants to sort of survive or not. And three of them did. So by this point, 16 years had traversed and these plants were in full sun, just about, because a lot of the shading had fallen off. No watering other than ambient rain. And that's it. No repotting, nothing. And Melbourne can have quite harsh weather. It can be really quite hot. It can be quite dry for periods and it can be quite cold in winter. So the tenacity of these plants. Needless to say, I said, John, I've got to rescue these orchids. So I rescued the Epidendrum, which immediately bloomed, repotted it fine. I rescued the Dendrobium kingianum, tough as nuts. That just went berserk. Once I repotted it, it bloomed. And then there was the Cymbidium. So I rescued it and I'll come in and show you exactly what was on the plant. So there were four pseudobulbs clinging on for life and I'll come in and show you specifically. And three of them had absolutely no vegetation whatsoever, but they were still green, so still alive. And one pseudobulb had a, a couple of, or maybe even just one really stringy, very yellow, very black, very sun damaged leaf. And I thought, well, where there is life, there is hope. The pseudobulbs were still green. There was still a bulb with some leaves. So I took it home and I repotted it. Well, 
I don't think I actually repotted it because it kind of wasn't potted anymore. It had fallen over on its side. It was contained in the pot, but there was no medium, just a tangle of sort of dead plant really and these four pseudobulbs with some life and some active roots. So I repotted it and it took about a year just to settle into its new home and not freak out and then it started to grow. It sent up a new growth, a new pseudobulb which matured and this year it bloomed. I was so amazed. So I think this is year three of my rescuing of the orchid and here we are. So there is the flower. And now the orchid is continuing its usual growth pattern. It sent up a new growth for this year, which will mature by next spring. That will bloom and yada, yada, yada. The wonderful cycle of cymbidium growth continues. So I guess though, the moral of the story is cymbidiums can be incredibly tough. Now it never bloomed for those 16 years, but it remained alive. But you know what, plant lovers? I think we should take a little trip over to meet John, my father-in-law, in 93, not out, still, smart, funny, and engaged. So let's go and see what he thinks of seeing this orchid for the first time in about 20 years. John, look at that orchid. What do you think? I have never seen that orchid so amazing before. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever remember it flowering before, John? I can't remember seeing it flowering, yeah, no, not at all. So how long ago did Gladys um, grow orchids? I reckon 40 years ago. 40 years, so this could be 40 years old. I'm tipping it's 40 years old, yeah. Really? Old, yeah. Wow. Can you remember how many she had when she was at the peak of her growing? Well, I thought she only had one or two, but you tell me she had more than that. But... Well, I found three that were not so happy, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's through sheer neglect that what happened. <laughs> sheer neglect. But we've forgiven you because, look, can you believe that this survived 16 years with... <laughs> with no care or love, John. My plants live like that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't the, care for me. No, they've got to be tough, 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 tough. So when did Gladys really get into orchids? I'd say it was at least um, 35 years ago, at least. Yeah. When she was younger, into the, there was a new thing about orchids and she hopped into it, you know. This is a beauty. So I think you built the shade house here, did you? Yeah, and that was when I was still working. So at least 35 years ago? At least 35 years ago. Wow. 40, you know. So, what do you think Gladys would think seeing this? <laughs> She'd be amazed because we've never seen them growing like that down the back here. I have never seen them growing like no. that. No, but did you ever go and have a look though? Yeah, I used to look down here all the time and see, oh yeah, nothing's happened. But I mean, <laughs> that would be from one year to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't a regular looker down here though. Fair enough. And they do only flower once a year. Yeah, that, and that's what I was always waiting for that to happen. <laughs> you just missed the moment. Well, here you are, John. It is never too late to uh, enjoy a, an orchid. A big orchid, but so big. You know, the ones I've seen have only been little ones. That one's fabulous. Isn't it? It's quite fabulous. Um, well, I think Gladys had about five or six different types. So there may have been more, John, but the 16 <laughs> years of cruel neglect. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And, and me throwing out stuff that I didn't see was any good anyway. Right. And, uh, because when I found this, um, there was only a few bits left and a couple of leaves, so you could easily have thrown it away. <laughs> Quite easily. Now me as a gardener. Anyway, but here it is, and it's now... Blooming like I'd never seen it before. No, and living its best life. Yeah. Not unlike you, John. <laughs> well, I guess to get to 93 and still be living and pain-free and... Well, there you go. Yeah. And John, and I'll come and show you, but John is, what's your role at Trugo? I'm the uh, captain of the Yarrow Trugo team. Yep. I'm the treasurer of the club. And aren't you not the world champion? I was the world champion in the year 2000. Have you been deposed? <laughs> yeah, well, no, I don't know whether I've been deposed as much as nobody's sort of put up there to show that they are a world champion again. Uh. So you're still then the current world champion because no one's <laughs> proven they're well, better than you. Well, as long as you live, all the others have died. Don't they? <laughs> I'll put the link to the Footscray. No, it's not Footscray. It's the Yarraville Trugo Club below. So you can check out just what Trugo is. And John is the king of Trugo. Well, at the moment, I'm still alive. And all my other players that were any good, they all died anyway. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> well, there you go. If you're under the age of 93 and into Trugo, you should contact John very soon. Well, John, thank you very much. I'm glad that you got a chance to see this in bloom. And I'm glad that um, the last person who would have seen it bloom was probably Gladys. Yeah, it's, it, that's true. And that would have been over 20 years ago if, she, if there was one then. There you go. So there's a connection between me and her. There is definitely a big connection. Wonderful. <laughs> Never seen him so big. <laughs> All right. Thanks, John. And I'll show you when it blooms again next year. How long will they last like that? Oh, months. Will they? Months. Yeah.
Oh gosh, that is a beautiful. Orchid. They can last a couple of months. Can it? Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. You often see these flowers in florists cut because they um, they just last. So it's really good value actually. If you're buying someone a bunch of flowers, you yeah. should buy them orchids because orchids. they'll last at least a month in in, oh, in a vase. Right. In yeah. A vase. Right. Bear that in mind when you're next giving <laughs> someone flowers, John. <laughs> That doesn't happen too often. All right, so there you are. Amazing. And you know what I love about this? It's that the last person who saw this bloom was my partner's mother, my mother-in-law, Gladys, who has been dead for 20 years. She was an orchid grower. My partner remembers as a child going out to the shade house to look at the orchids and seeing them. So as I've never met her, I do think this is a wonderful connection between she and I. Let me turn that so you can see it better. That I've managed to get one of her orchids, in fact, three of them, to bloom again. But this one particularly, because it's so dramatic, uh, and everyone loves a cymbidium. Particularly if you're not that familiar with orchids, cymbidiums are the things that you kind of recognize and get excited about. So it was thrilling to be able to take John the flower and show it to him. When the epidendrum bloomed, I snipped that off and I took it to him for a vase. It's a bright orange one. I don't love epidendrums, but I'm certainly looking after this one so that it can survive and continue. And now I have made a video about rescuing and repotting cymbidiums, so I'll link all those below. In fact, I've got a cymbidium playlist, so I'll link that. So if you want to know perhaps what you might do if you find an old plant or just basic repotting, I'll link all those. We won't go into it now. Needless to say though, that with this one, I used exactly the same format, which was out of the bag um, orchid mix, so nothing special. Same principles, uh, a healthy dose of slow release fertilizer in the spring, and then the occasional watering with a liquid fertilizer or a liquid tonic every three or four waterings, if I remember, because my cymbidiums are outside and out of mind, out of sight. So care-wise, I've made a basic care video for cymbidiums, which I'll link above and below. Essentially, it's outside with all my others, outside all year, undercover, it gets dappled light, slightly more dappled light in winter, and I water it, but I tend to keep my cymbidiums on the drier side rather than drenching them. But as we've discovered, plant lovers, tough as nuts. Now, cymbidiums won't thrive in those conditions, as I saw when I rescued this plant, but it will survive and live to tell another tale and in fact to bloom again. So I am very, very thrilled that this orchid bloomed. And I think in terms of what was available in the late 80s and 90s, that this color was probably quite symbolic of the time, I think. I am very happy that you've survived Orchid, and I hope that it continues to bloom. Um, and then who knows who the next donor might be. It's quite amazing to think that this plant is at least 30 years old too. The thing about orchids largely is if you don't kill them, they can kind of live forever because they keep vegetatively reproducing by sending up new shoots, creating new pseudobulbs and kind of extending the plant. So um, they kind of can live forever, which means you have to look after them. Otherwise they won't live forever. There we are, plant lovers. Cymbidium Rescue 2 slash Aunt Cymbidium's Tough Nuts. I hope you enjoyed it. Now the Trugo Club that John mentioned, I'll put the link below. It is an arcane game that was developed here in Melbourne in the beginning of the 20th century in the railway yards. And it's kind of a bit like croquet in that you have to hit a ball the length of what was a railway carriage and get it through the door at the other end. So railway workers would play it um, to amuse themselves in between times. And it's now morphed into a sort of a, a regulated game. Kind of only really played in Melbourne and not by that many people. But John is the reigning world champion. And he does get more press than Madonna. He is constantly in the local news and on in papers and news broadcasts because um, well, he's 93, quite a character. And Trugo is a bizarre game. Anyway, so I'll put the link below and if anyone's interested, you can sign up or start your own Trugo clubs all around the world. So plant lovers, from this wonderful Cymbidium Rescue Bloom, the last person to see it flower was my mother-in-law. We are going to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this narrative arc of love, survival, ancestry, and Trugo. And join me next week uh, for another continuing orchid adventure. Who knows what it might be, but I look forward to seeing you then. So take care, and I'll see you on Friday.